Hi everyone, in today's video I'm just going to be doing a little kind of basic introduction to weld and subtract using the LockClick Idea Studio software. Now I have got a playlist for LockClick on my YouTube channel so if you do have this cutting machine and you're new to it, if you go to my um, channel here on YouTube and click on the playlist you'll find a lock click playlist so I'm just going to do something really simple today just to try and show you how the weld and subtract work in lock click because it is slightly different than in using canvas workspace so I've got my lock click idea studio open I'm on the latest version which is if I click on check for updates it will check and it'll tell me just so you know I'm on version 1.9.7 and that's the latest version okay so if you go to the help file and look for updates on yours and you've not got that version at the time of recording this that which is in March 2024 that is the latest version. But I've found with LockClick that they do update their software, you know, fairly regularly as users are reporting back issues. As I say, I've got basic page. Um, I'm in inches. If you don't know how to change it from inches to whatever you want to work in, in the corner of the, the screen here, you'll see it says inches. If you right click on it, you can change it to pixels, inch or millimeters. I work in inches, so that's what we're working in. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up to the top of the page to the text and then I'm going to left click on the page and you get the word lock click and I'm just going to type the word B, B E and left click anywhere to deselect and I'm just going to drag that out to make it bigger. I'm not doing anything specific sizes today, I just want to show you the process. From here now with the word selected I'm going to come over to my properties panel. You can see the information here about where it's positioned on the map, the size and the word and the font. So you can see the word BE here. If I click on the downward facing arrow next to the font, this is their default system font and then you may find that yours is highlighted under lock click and you can see here that this is the font that it's chosen. I want to use one of my own fonts so I'm going to come to system. This will pull through all the fonts that you have installed on your computer. From here I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to find a font. I will list link to the fonts in the accompanying blog post. So if you are watching on YouTube directly under the title of this video is the description box you'll start to see the description. It may say see more, show more, more. Click on the word more, the box opens. And in that box, there will be a direct link to my website and blog. It says my website and blog. If you go there, go to the blog, look for the thumbnail of this video. All the links will be in the blog post, okay? So I'm just gonna click on these little arrows just to close this window for a minute. And I'm just gonna drag this out and make it a bit bigger. Now, along the top here, you've got different modes of how to view what you have on your page. I'm currently in what they call normal mode, which is fill mode effectively. If I click on the contour mode, that just gives you the outline. So you'll see now by looking at the outline that the, word, the letter B and the letter E overlap. And if I just sent this to the cutter, the cutter would follow this black line and it would follow this black line and I'd end up with a cutout section here in the middle which is not what I want. So if you were wanting to cut something like this in vinyl you want this to be welded or united you know however you are used to hearing it described. In Canvas Workspace we say weld but in other softwares they do use unify or unite that kind of thing or union. With this BE selected I'm going to come up to the top here and you've got like all your align icons and then you've got your flip horizontal, flip vertical and then this first box when you hover over it. This is one thing I would hope that lock click would change. When you hover over the boxes you can't read what's underneath them properly. 
and you know if you move away the word disappears but basically when you hover over this first box if you kind of move the hand very slowly you can see that it does say unite which is basically weld so i'm going to click this box and just watch what happens so i've clicked the unite box and nothing appears to have happened when we use canvas workspace instantly by clicking weld we would see that this section is removed and it would all become one with the lock click software it doesn't quite work like that and it doesn't work like that when particularly you've got the middles of letters and that this is why i chose this word and why the next word i'm going to choose i've, I've chose specifically because again the, the letters have middles so you know things like a n sometimes e o etc so as i say so far i've just typed the word changed the font to the font i want to use and i've clicked unite and nothing appears to have happened so if you carry along along these icons and you come to the two rectangles that look like vertical rectangles and you hover over it it says ungroup layers if i left click on that watch what happens so instantly it's showing as being welded. So it had welded under the Unite process, but it wasn't showing because if I left click on the page to deselect and then left click on these middles, you'll see that these middles are separate. So if I just drag an imaginary box around both and go back to the normal mode or the fill mode, you'll now see that it's all in black, but those middles are still there if I click on them. Sometimes in Canvas Workspace, when you want to do other functions, if you've got middles like this that are still, still separate from your word, certain functions won't work. So a way to kind of ensure that we kind of, you know, get the result that we're expecting is select everything, and then come back over to your icons. Your first icon I told you was Unite. Your second icon is Subtract. Watch what happens when I click Subtract. It punches those middles from that letter B. So this now, when I move it around, is all one word, whereas before it was three separate elements. The B and the E that's welded was one, and then the middles were like the second element and the third element. OK, so I hope that kind of helps. So now I'm going to just leave that there for now and I'm just going to do something else. So again, I'm going to come up to the text, left click on the page, you'll get the lock click icon. And I'm going to type the word thankful and left click. And again, I'm just going to drag it out to make it a bit bigger so that you can see it again. On the properties box, you can see the word thankful. You can see it automatically chooses the lock click default font. I'm going to click on the downward arrow, make sure I'm on system fonts, which is my own fonts. And then I'm just going to choose another font. Now, again, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. So again, because I've not got the, can you see if, if I've got the fill mode, you can't tell whether this is all welded or united or joined together or not but when you're in the outline mode you can so again with the word selected I'm going to come up to unite and again nothing happens but the reason nothing happens is because we've got all these middles of these letters here in the H's in the A in the middles of the K so again with this word selected even though we've selected unite or weld if we come along to ungroup layers, now the bounding box has gone around the whole thing. And if I come back to the properties box and fill it with color, you'll see now that all this looks all completely black. If I left click to click away and click in the middle of the H and the A and the Ks, you'll see that these are separate sections. So if I select all of this, then come back up to the top and do subtract you'll see now that this becomes one unit these are no longer being able to be clicked on as separate elements and if we go back to the contour or the stroke mode we'll see that the word is completely filled 
So I'm going to come to the properties box. And with this word thankful selected, I'm going to click on the black color swatch and I'm just going to change it red. Sorry, on the stroke, I'm going to change it to red. Hopefully, it will turn red. There you go. So when I put the fill back in, you'll now see that this is red. With this word selected, I'm going to come up to the top of the page to this little star that's got like a, an outline around it. And this is your offset icon. I'm going to select the offset icon and in the off offset distance here, even though my mat's in inches, it's showing in millimeters. So I'm just going to take this up by using the up arrow to four. You can do whatever you want. I found that for me in just playing with the software, four seems to be okay. And now I'm going to hit confirm. So now when I left click on the item, this is my original red one and this is the offset. So I'm going to close the properties box. You just click on this little arrow in the corner and I'm going to go back to outline mode. Okay, so now I want to, in fact, let's go back and fill this with a different color. So I'm going to come back to the properties box, come to the color fill and just change it to a different color for now. So the black was my original word, the red was my word that I typed, that I welded, and the offset is the purple. The purple is already welded because we did the offset after I welded the original word, okay? So I'm just gonna go back to the fill just so you can see it. So now I'm gonna position the word thankful over the word B. If I right click and click bring to forward, it should bring it to the front. Okay. If it, if you're on, you can do it that way, or you can come to your layers panel, select your word, come to your layers panel, and just make sure that your thankful word is above the B E. Okay. It doesn't matter about the red layer at the moment because I'm not doing anything with that. It's just these two layers. So the purple layer has got to be in the layer order above the black layer. It's the same as when we do subtract in Canvas Workspace. So now I'm going to select both of these. Let's just see if we can center them horizontally over here on the left. And with them both selected, I'm going to come up to the subtract icon and just left click and that's punched my word, my purple thankful word out of my word B. So now when I bring this up and position this in the gap, this thankful sits in that gap of where the other word was nicely. And if you're making this in vinyl, it will just help to um, be able to layer your vinyl without actually layering on top of vinyl because as I've said in the past things like puff vinyl can't be layered glitter vinyl you could layer if you had the glitter layer on top but if you were doing this in say two different colors of glitter vinyl and you'd not done the subtract or punch out method you'd be layering this word directly over this word and over time even though it may you know, uh, press initially, it will start to come away. So by making the punch out area, that eliminates you having any problem with layering vinyl. So that's for today. All as you need to do now is if you want to, as you drag the, say, bottom right hand corner, you'll see it says nine inches wide by 6.3 inches high. If you wanted to make this a particular size to go on a sweatshirt or a t-shirt or something, you know, you can resize it that way as well. If you were cutting this in heat transfer vinyl, you would need to flip it. So you can horizontal flip you can flip it here. You can flip it when you get into the software, but I personally generally like to flip it here while I'm on the mat because, you know, I make designs 
and I don't always cut them or I don't always cut them straight away. I might make this design and save it and not cut it or not cut it for months. So I, I just, you know, like to pre-flip and then that way it kind of, A, reminds me when I open the file that because it's flipped, I was probably going to be using a heat transfer vinyl, but B, it also stops me from inadvertently cutting it when it's not flipped because heat transfer vinyls you have to cut in reverse because you put your heat transfer vinyl shiny side down on your mat and the shiny side is your transfer tape so you're cutting on the back layer if that makes sense so that when you turn it over it then becomes the right way around so that's why you have to flip it so that's it so that's a kind of basic introduction to resizing welding or uniting as they call it here in their software and using subtract and how to make sure that your weld is what you you know what you expect i hope this hasn't been too confusing for you but as i mentioned earlier there are several ways to do different things within this software and there are things in this software that we don't have in canvas workspace so it's all a learning curve and I just wanted to leave all the different options in the video. Anyway, please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.